Welcome. Well, this is my video on the 1990s X-Men animated series, season 4, episode 1, The Juggernaut Returns. So, spoilers for the show leading up to and including this episode, another episode I absolutely love. Before I get into it, in the description box there's a link to donate to the SAC After Strikers, which I urge you to do, and some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And, yeah, let's dive right in. Right, and, um, yeah, so this is, usually I do two episodes per video, but the schedule, long story short, the, the, um, from tomorrow, it'll be two episodes per day again until I am completely done and then I move on to the next show. So... Yeah, let's get into... There we go. So, yeah, we see that Juggernaut did survive the... Which, you know, it would be pretty dark if he had actually just drowned in the, you know... And I, maybe this episode originally aired closer to... But here, you know, now that I'm watching it on Disney+, Plus, you know, it's been several episodes where we didn't really know exactly what would happen... But, yeah. And, yeah, we meet Eugene. And, you know, he di he discovers the the Citrac. Let's see, I guess not the stone, because that's the one, but the, the inscription, or whatever. And, you know, yeehaw! They laughed at me. Maybe it's because you say yeehaw instead of eureka? Juggernaut punches a shark, and somehow there's still people out in there in the world who don't think comic books are amazing. So at one point, like, early in the episode, like, the traffic stops on the bridge, and you have, like, a mother and two sons. Is it just me, or do they look exactly like young Scott Summers, his, his brother Mark, I think, and their mother? It's just... Like, usually I'm in favor of them, like, using contextless, like, designs. I guess this may be also, I don't know if originally this episode aired so close to the Corsair-centric uh, Orphan's End, but, yeah. And, you know, the rest of the out-of-context designs in this episode I am in favor of. And that brings us so yeah um the episode writers wanted this to be a more personal fight at first so Xavier keeps contacting X-Men but all of them at the exact same time have taken off the thing that has the communicator is like you realize that Chanel number one is going to tear you a new one she's gonna write the missive to end all missives over this it's just I feel like there was a less forced way to to avoid the X-Men. Because I get it. You know, they wanted it to be a more personal fight. They wanted it to be Xavier versus Kane Marco. And, you know, Beast there a little bit. But, just, yeah. And, yeah. So, Juggernaut destroys the mansion. So, this, this episode called The Juggernaut Returns is taking a page out of the book of Superman Returns. And just... Doing the same thing? Oh, I'm kidding. I don't think it was completely necessary for two different episodes to have Juggernaut bust up the mansion, though. And, yeah, so Juggernaut ends up inside the Danger Room and fights the Hulk. Which, just, again, you know, because they got the rights. The, you know, the movies wouldn't have been able to, to get away with it. You know, you wouldn't see Hulk in an X-Men live-action movie because the rights were with different, um, you know, X-Men had... X-Men were with Fox. I forget, were Hulk Columbia maybe or something, you know, un until... Actually, I'm not entirely sure how the, the solo movie Hulk movie rights are. Anyway, but yeah, that's a, that's a cool... Because, like, you know, if you have no idea who that is, you're just going to be like, oh, Big Green Dude, that's cool! Although I don't know if anybody doesn't know what the Hulk looks like. But, you know, for, for anyone who knows, it's like, Hulk, you know, and I forget, have they... Certainly would make a lot of sense, because they're two of the strongest, 
in the Marvel Universe, so it would make a lot of sense to have the two fight off, face off against each other. I forget. I know Hulk fought Wolverine. That was actually the introduction of Wolverine. Let's see. Which right there tells you how popular he was from right away. That he, you know, I'm not sure they were actually intending to make it more than a one-off thing, but he got so popular now everybody knows who Wolverine is. And yeah, so Eugene becomes Juggernaut. I have to admit. If they hadn't had him say his name early on, you know, I actually thought parts of that were a flashback, not like a, what's the word, like um, an intercut, you know, thing that takes, it apparently happens at the same time, although, did it take Eugene that long to find the Citarac gem? Because, like... Kane Marco had to like drive for a little while to get to the X Mansion. And then he busts his way through a lot of it. Yeah, I'm not sure that it completely lines up anyway. But yeah, then you know, once Eugene juggernauts up, then you actually you know, Kane Marco loses the juggernaut. Bet you were a, bet you wish you were a mutant now, huh, Kane? And Xavier and Beast are the only X-Men to feel that Kane Marco should be set. Like, Cyclops reluctantly agrees, but, like, almost no one... You know, and, yeah, by the end of the episode, Xavier barely wants to do it. So, just, like, Kane, you are not good at making friends. This is not... You, you may need... You may need to work on this, you know. And, yeah, so Eugene goes home as Juggernaut, and he's got the... Midas, King Midas touch thing where you know everything he touches he accidentally screws up so that's I actually kind of thought that that would be a thing but it's just there for that one scene like I gotta say I did not I really struggled to get a handle I, I love the episode but I really struggled to get a handle on the Eugene character I kept thinking oh this is what they're gonna do and they kept that kept changing and yeah, so we get a flashback. You know, we we've gotten a little bit of backstory on on Juggernaut before on, on Kane before. So yeah, I gotta keep calling him Kane because technically there's two Juggernauts in this episode. But yeah, the the you know this thing of you know we, yeah we already knew that there was some kind of familiar. I, I forget if this is the first time we found out they were step brother. No, I think that was mentioned before. You know. Kane and Xavier were brothers, stepbrothers, and we learn here, you know, Kane's father was willing to send Kane away to boarding school just to make sure that he could get the money that Charles' mother, who was dying at the time, you know, had. So that's, yeah, that, you know, and, and the... It is a it is sadly something that happens in real life. There are a number of people who, you know, the 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 brother, yeah, uh, step siblings. So there's sometimes conflict, especially if the the you know it's essentially the problem is you already have the the you know parent child relationship, and then another kid comes into that. So the first kid is worried that they're going to lose their parents' love. And, you know, here, you know, yeah, that really actually was on the table. That was something that basically did happen. And the, the um, where it's right on the tip of my tongue, basically, right, and you can, you can really understand how Kane Marco ended up so cold his entire life you know he that that was his father you know someone that cold and calculating whereas Charles had some years with his birth mother and she was much more giving and yeah you know Beast realizes you know he yeah Xavier relates this to him and, and Beast says how sad and you know clearly genuinely feeling it you know what beast you know what I think would help literary reference and he delivers 
the sins of the father. Wonderful. And <laughs> I would not say no to a spin-off show that focused purely on Incel Eugene in his massive suit with Juggernaut powers. Like just like I don't know, do do like a alternate dimension, alternate version of, of this episode where K Marco dies, Eugene runs around with the, the the How did he get that suit? Like he said that he barely had any money. Did he threaten the guy into the and it just which actually makes me real like so Kane had options. Kane could have he chose to go around looking like that. That was that was not the only way to be juggernaut. That's yeah. And you know, Eugene like he's he's trying to you know he says he's there to pick up women, but he only picks up the guy and throws him and you know why is she running away? <laughs> Uh, that's, yeah. I don't think Wolverine is completely wrong about women want you to be yourself. But I, th I think there might be more to it. I think that Eugene just really doesn't understand women. Like, just, yeah. You know, it's very much, like, he basically sees women as, as trophies. And he thinks, you know, if I just, you know, if I do something to earn then you know and and that was like I thought that was gonna be like the the yeehaw moment and he was gonna be like I've been going about this all wrong it's not you know the fact that I'm not big and strong that women don't like it's my personality which you know off usually the case and and he crashes into this film studio where the Power Rangers are fighting a dinosaur, and at this moment in the episode, I was like, oh, and the fact that he's huge is going to make him a movie star. Like, the... Hold on, I guess... Yeah, like a Mysterio thing, kind of, you know, just the, the... He has something unusual to bring to movies, so that's going to be his thing. But then he runs away, you know, so that's... That's also not where they end... Uh, yeah. And we see a flashback, Kane making everyone hate Xavier. And Xavier says, you know, I thought I was over this, but I was so young and it hurt so much. Which is, you know, it's not the most optimistic message for the kids, but it can maybe help them empathize with adults who still struggle to overcome trauma. And, yeah, so... The, the, they manage to transfer the, the Juggernaut powers back to Kane. And Eugene, who has now made a positive impression on at least some women, you know, he's like holding up tables and women are dancing on the tables. He loses the power and he's stuck there in oversized clothing. In, in the business, we call this the Reverse Hulk. And just then... You know, he there's this woman under a table, so he you know he he drunk her under the table. He picks up the table and she's like, "Oh, thank you." And then I was thinking, "Oh, this is they're gonna do the the thing where someone with superpowers saves someone and they you know become partners." But then Eugene just passes out, so I don't know if that's where they were going. I I. <laughs> I demand a follow-up episode that that lets us know what ended up happening with Eugene, because the like, no way he's be he's gonna be able to pay for all the property damage he did if, you know, he said that the helmet is bigger than his old apartment, like, just, because I feel like there's there's a potential, you know, I know some people would say he didn't earn a happy ending, but there is a potential for a happy ending here, just like. Have him do some honestly, like you know, he strikes me as he's he's maybe a nerd. Maybe he could help make movie. Maybe he can, you know, write some Power Rangers episodes or something. I don't know. 
And yeah, so Cain does not want anyone else to be able to to you know take his his powers. I don't know how he managed to not make sure anyone else couldn't get their hands on the gem before, but then there wouldn't be an episode, so that's probably why. So he throws the gem into space. And, you know, the fact that he doesn't attack them there at the end, that's his way of saying thank you. You know, he's, a, he's let's be honest, he is not going to say thank you with just his words. That's, yeah, probably the, the best chance you have is the, the yeah. But, but, yeah, you know, that is the first time that Kane Marco, as the Juggernaut, has chosen not to attack the X-Men. All the other times, he jumped at the chance to attack them. So, yeah, you know, there is a little bit of... And, you know, again, the show has has this, you know... It, it has faith in people, you know, individuals at least. And, yeah, he, you know, Kane shows that he is capable of choosing not to attack someone, you know, and I think that might... But, but yeah, I, I think the episode strikes a good balance between saying, you know, bullies are not necessarily just like pure evil, but you also, you know, they're, they're, you know, there often is a reason for why they bully someone, but that also doesn't mean that, like, you're, you know, going to be able to do, like, you know, you're going to remove the, the thorn from the paw and, you know, BFFs or something. Just, you know, it's a process. And that is a good and realistic message. It's not very realistic that just immediately he would be, you know, and, and you know, the door's open. You know, he's. It is possible that he comes. You know, I I know some iterations. You know, I do, I, you probably can't particularly tell if you don't. You know, if you know, you know. But right behind me is X Men Legends Two, and in that he does actually do some good things. So, yeah, you know, it it is that thing of sometimes, you know, the yeah. There's a there's a number of reformed you know, antagonist characters in the X-Men universe. I think that is it for this one. So the next video should be me talking about a movie. So hope to catch you then. Otherwise, see you tomorrow for more X-Men. Make my Marvel.